In this video, I've renovated this 1930s radio to use Bluetooth, and it plays music from its era. The cool part is, this tuning dial still works. You still hear static, and it will still tune in music just like it did back in its day. When I first got the radio, you can tell it hasn't been used in a very long time. Even with all its scrapes, bruises, and cracks, and I knew the radio didn't work anymore, I still thought it was beautiful in some strange way. There's also a chance I could be crazy. Let me know. So the cost of all this beauty was about $150 back in the 1930s. That would be equivalent to about $2,700 today. The next thing I wanted to do was get everything cleaned up. So I sent all my parts over to Haslip Cycle Works for them to be sandblasted. Thanks Robert for sandblasting these parts. I think they look pretty good. I'm just going to finish them off with a coat of paint. I wanted to paint the faceplate, but first I had to remove these gears, and the only way to do that was to drill them out. These gears look really good after being cleaned up, but you may be wondering what the springs are for. There's actually two gears sandwiched together, and this gives the tuning dial a smoother operation. Now that all the parts are cleaned up, I can start putting the radio back together. So here it is, finally got it all back together. I basically removed all the electronics except for the tubes and capacitors. I also removed all the tube shields so you can see them, and replaced the light bulbs with LEDs. I wanted to keep the radio as original as possible, but with a fresh new look. Next thing that I needed to do was replace these rubber grommets. To do this, I simply just printed new ones out. Even though no one will ever see them, I think they look pretty good. The next thing I added was a Raspberry Pi to play the MP3s, and some relays for the Raspberry Pi to control. I also added half watt resistors to dim down the LEDs, because they were crazy bright. So I mounted this LED dimmer on top of the Raspberry Pi, and then added a 3.3 to 5 volt converter, because these relays are 5 volts and the Raspberry Pi only has 3.3 outputs. The only problem now is, even though I removed everything, I still don't have enough room to mount the Raspberry Pi or the amplifier. My only option now was to remove all the guts from the center section. I didn't want to have to do this, but, well you know, I had to make it go. So redoing all this wiring in here actually took a lot of work trying to pack it into the bottom of this radio. At first I didn't think it would be that much, but I used almost every single GPIO on the Raspberry Pi except for one. So this is how I'm going to detect changes in the tuning dial. I have two optical sensors opposite of each other because this wheel only turns one half revolution. One of these sensors will be used to play static and the other will be used to play music. So here's how I plan these sensors to work. If both sensors are detecting a low signal, then we will play static. If one sensor is detecting high while the other is detecting a low, then we will play static and music. This will have the effect that you're getting close to tuning in a station. And finally, if they are both high, then we will only hear music as if the station is perfectly tuned in. So here's the finished wheel. I just used a black magic marker to indicate where I wanted the static to stop and the music to start. While we're talking about tuning, I wanted to show you this tuning capacitor. It's actually an adjustable capacitor, and I think it's pretty cool. One problem with these is they attract a lot of dust. I think it's looking pretty good. On to the amplifier. So I got this pile. It's a 90 watt amplifier with Bluetooth, and I think this will do the trick, especially considering this was only a 7 watt amplifier when it was original. See, the amplifier is pretty small, has audio input, Bluetooth antenna, volume, bass, treble, and what I'm going to do with this is basically open it up so I can control this Bluetooth switch and I will adapt the volume 
to the outside of the radio so you can control the volume to this new amplifier. Then I'm going to hide it up underneath here. It fits perfectly there. These are the modifications I made to the amplifier. I connected the power switch to one of the relays, connected the Bluetooth switch to another relay, and finally extended the volume control knob so it can go on the outside of the radio. The next thing that I did was make sure that I can control the relays. To do this, I just wrote a simple Python script to turn on and off the lights. I did this for all the I.O. to test and make sure that it works. The next thing I tested was the amplifier and to make sure the Raspberry Pi was playing music through it. I found the problem during testing that my Bluetooth wouldn't work. And it was because this Bluetooth switch actually controls three different connections. The simplest way for me to fix this was to add one more relay to the system. I finally had everything wired up and working. My wire routing isn't as pretty as I would like it, but I'm really happy I got everything to fit out of sight under the radio. Now that everything's working, let me show you the tuning dial in action. The music sensor is here, and the static sensor is here. When this red light goes out, the music will start playing. You can kind of hear the music playing underneath the static. And when this red light goes out, the static will stop. There, we tuned in our fake radio station. The next thing I wanted to do was polish this faceplate and fix the broken glass. Fixing the broken glass was pretty easy. All I had to do was cut out a new one using Lexan. Then install it back into its original frame. This dial actually had preset stations that we weren't going to use anymore. To prevent light from just shining through it, I decided to print out this ring. This was the original radio dial and it was kind of showing its age, so I got a new reproduction one. That's about it for part one of this project, and I'm really happy with the results so far. For part two, me and my assistant are going to get all these parts back into the original cabinet. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you know when part two is up. As always, please contact me with any questions or comments. Thanks!